Robert's Rules of Order in a Nutshell Why use Robert's Rules of Order? There are two main reasons. Be efficient in making decisions and to help reduce or eliminate most conflicts. What are the basic principles? Fair debate. Preserve the rights of the minority and the absent. The right to know the meaning. The minority can protest, but the majority still decides. All votes are counted equally. Business transactions are conducted in fairness and good faith. What are some definitions? A constitution is usually articles of incorporation filed with a state. A constitution is rarely changed. It is often comprised of only a name and a purpose for the organization. Bylaws often contain officers and officer duties and committees. These types of positions may change over time. Changing the bylaws are often defined by the amendment section in the bylaws. The bylaws are usually comprised of advance notice. It could be one to two months advance notice to members. This is to protect the absent. This advance notice often contains recommended changes. And when the group does meet to make a decision or to potentially change the bylaws, it takes a two-thirds majority vote to make those changes. What is a quorum? A quorum is commonly a majority of members, but it could be a majority of active members. A quorum is often defined in the bylaws. How about a chair? A chair is a presiding officer that leads the meetings and ensures the procedures are observed. Who has an important role? The chair does to ensure the rights are preserved, but also the members to understand how and when to use procedures. Who? Everyone. What are some guidelines? It is best to use titles. Madam Chair or Mr. Chair instead of Mary or Joe. It's best to avoid personal pronouns. The chair rules the motion is, not I rule. It's best to stand when speaking, to be seen and heard. It's important to address the chair and not individuals. Look at the chair when speaking. And it's important to maintain a courteous tone. In large groups, it may be necessary to state your name and perhaps identification. The chair may not recognize you or know you in a large group. How does the meeting start? There are three important items for a meeting. One is to verify a quorum exists. Are there enough members present to make business decisions? It may be necessary to prove the agenda. This is especially important in large groups when time is a constraint. It also can be helpful to designate a parliamentarian for large groups. What is a parliamentarian? A parliamentarian is an advisor to the chair and to the members. The parliamentarian can be asked to clarify, however, the chair makes the final decision. The parliamentarian gets the chair's attention if there are any errors or violations of rules. What is a typical agenda? Meeting minutes, office reports, including treasurer's report and announcements. Committee reports, unfinished business, not old business, unfinished business from a previous meeting, and new business. How about meeting minutes? Meeting minutes do not need to be read to the group if they were printed or emailed. The chair simply states, are there any additions or corrections to the meeting minutes? This does not require a motion to approve. The chair simply states, the minutes stand approved as distributed or the minutes stand approved as corrected. How about a treasurer's report? A treasurer's report is an officer report. There is no need for a motion to approve because it is a statement of fact similar to other officer reports. What are motions? What is a main motion? A main motion is a proposal about what, when, where, who, dollars. A member rises and states, Madam Chair or Mr. Chair. The member waits to be recognized, does not speak, simply waits. The chair recognizes the member. John Arbuckle has the floor. The member makes a motion. I move we purchase a portable lectern, not I make a motion. 
The chair never makes motions. Only members make motions. Another member calls out second. There is no need to be recognized by the chair. In large assemblies, a member may need to stand and give a name to ensure it is a member making the second. A member may or may not agree with the motion, only agrees that the motion should be discussed. The chair states, I have a second. If no second, the chair states, is there a second? Repeat, is there a second? Hearing no second, the next item of business is. This motion is not recorded in the meeting minutes because there was no second. There is an exception, and that is resolutions. Resolutions don't need a second because resolutions are formed by a group of people, not one person. Before the motion is placed on the floor, the chair may suggest modifications before the group owns the motion. For example, the chair may state, do you want to put a maximum dollar amount spent on this portable lectern? By covering these details before it is placed on the floor, this helps eliminate some amendments. The chair then requests the secretary to restate the motion to ensure the meeting minutes are accurate. Then the chair requests the person who made the motion to confirm it is recorded correctly. Then the chair states, there is a motion on the floor that, is there any discussion? Now it is the property of the assembly. All further action requires assembly approval, amendments, etc. Who speaks first? The maker of the motion. Who speaks second? It's best to alternate between favoring and opposing viewpoints on a motion. The chair watches body language to help determine this. To speak, stand and wait. Do not talk. Just stand and wait until recognized by the chair. Everyone is given the opportunity to speak before anyone speaks twice. I'll repeat, everyone is given the opportunity, they don't have to speak, but is given the opportunity to speak before anyone can speak a second time. After a person has spoken twice, they exhaust the right to speak a third time. The chair cannot make motions and cannot join in debate unless control of the meeting is relinquished to someone else. A chair is often replaced by an officer. The chair steps away from the lectern, is with the members, speaks with the same requirements, and no longer has the title of chair. A chair cannot interrupt unless rules are violated. A member must address the chair, not individuals. The member must be courteous, and the member cannot speak longer than 10 minutes without group approval, unless the bylaws designate a different time limit. When debate wanes, the chair states, are you ready for the question, or are you ready to vote? The chair can close debate after everyone has spoken twice. The chair restates the motion and calls for the vote. All in favor, aye. All opposed, no. All opposed, same sign is incorrect. All opposed, no. The chair and members can abstain. However, only yes and no votes count. Abstentions do not count. If there are 20 members present, three say yes, one says no, the motion passes. If it is a tie, the motion is defeated. If the vote is not clear, the chair calls for a visual count. Large groups use rising vote. It is easier to count members standing than to count arms and hands waving. A member may call division of assembly. This forces a visual count. When does a chair vote? Never, unless it affects the outcome. Case 1. It is a tie. The chair votes to approve. Case 2. Six in favor, five opposed. The chair votes no to defeat. A tie is a defeat. There is an exception. If it is by ballot, the chair votes. The chair announces the results. The motion passes or the motion fails. The secretary records in the meeting minutes the motion and the person who made the motion. The person who made the second is not recorded. Amendments are not recorded. Only the end result is recorded. If amended, the person who made the amendment is recorded. The motion made by Joseph Blow and amended by Jane Hathaway. Discussion and comments are not recorded. How many or who voted is not recorded. 
only if the motion passed or failed is recorded. What are subsidiary motions? Subsidiary motions assist in handling a main motion. Subsidiary motions take precedence over main motions and other subsidiary motions in ranking order. Only one main motion is on the floor at a time. However, multiple subsidiary motions are often okay. The order of priority is important. Main motion. Postpone indefinitely. Amend. Commit or refer. If there is a motion to commit or refer, there cannot be an amendment until a commit or refer motion has been resolved. Postpone to a certain time. Limit or expend the limits of debate. Previous question and lay on the table. All of them require a second. What is postpone indefinitely? I move to postpone this motion indefinitely. This is used to dispose of a main motion. Members would rather not take a stand on this motion, such as politics. If passed, this motion is not recorded in the meeting minutes. It is more than a delay. It eliminates the motion with no provision for bringing it back. How about amendments? I move to amend the time from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. This modifies a main motion. It must be germane to the motion. The exception is U.S. Congress. If there is a motion to purchase a lectern, it is out of order to have an amendment to chop down a cherry tree. There must be a vote on the amendment before voting on the main motion. A secondary amendment can amend a primary amendment, but it must be relevant. I move to amend the amendment from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. There must be a vote on the secondary amendment before voting on the primary amendment. There cannot be an amendment to the secondary amendment. No amendment to amendment to amendment. What is commit or refer? I move that we refer this to a committee. This sends the motion to a smaller group to obtain more information prior to the next meeting. It is the responsibility of the chair, assisted by the secretary, to ensure this motion is not forgotten at the next meeting. This is brought up at the next meeting under unfinished business. It is business that was not resolved at a prior meeting. What is postponed to a certain time? I move to postpone the motion until. This sets a specific date to continue the motion. It is used if more time is needed. It cannot delay longer than three months and it is brought up at that meeting under unfinished business. What is limit or extend debate? I move we limit debate. This can extend or limit the time length of debates, comments made by individual members. It can allow members to speak a third time, but it requires a two-thirds majority vote to make this change. What is the previous question? I move the previous question or call the question. This motion cannot interrupt and must be recognized by the chair, and it must have a second. It does not automatically force a vote. The chair states, the question has been called, is there any objection? If anyone objects, it takes a two-thirds majority vote to close debate. How about lay on the table? I move to lay on the table. This is used to take care of an emergency. If it is not a matter of urgency, it is out of order. It can be resumed at any time at the same meeting or another meeting, but it dies after three months. To take from the table is the responsibility of the members, not the chair. It is best to use refer to a committee, not lay on the table. What are privileged motions? What are orders of the day? I call for the orders of the day. This brings an assembly back to the agenda. It can interrupt the member on the floor. It does not require a second. It forces the chair to return to the agenda. How about a question of privilege? I rise to a question of privilege. While business is pending, it is used to obtain action. It can interrupt a member on the floor. The chair states, state the question. 
The member responds, we cannot hear the speaker. How about a recess? I move we recess for five minutes. This provides immediate intermission. This is useful when there are heated debates and allows time for some one-on-one -on -one discussion to help reduce conflicts. How about adjourning? I move we adjourn. In the middle of a main motion? Yes. If adopted, it forces immediate adjournment. It can occur while main motion is on the floor. Suppose it was a long meeting and it was heading toward midnight. People want to go home. This might be a good time to adjourn the meeting. All pending motions are brought up under unfinished business at the next meeting. What about fixing a time to which to adjourn? I move we adjourn until 7 p.m. tomorrow. This sets the date and possibly location for the next meeting. This can occur while main motion is on the floor. All pending motions are brought up under unfinished business at the next meeting. What about incidental motions? What is a point of order? I rise to a point of order. The member believes there was a violation of the rules. The member can interrupt. No second is required. It is not debatable. The chair states, state your point. The member responds, there was no second to the motion. How about appealing the decision of the chair? I appeal from the chair's decision. This can reverse a decision by the chair. This motion may interrupt, but it does require a second. It is debatable if the pending motion is debatable. The chair states, all those in favor of upholding the chair's decision vote aye. All opposed vote no. The chair's decision is overruled if no votes exceed aye votes. What is suspend the rules? I move to suspend the rules governing the order of business. Mr. Lee needs to leave. This motion must state the specific purpose of the suspension. In this case, changing the agenda. If anyone objects, it takes a two-thirds majority vote to suspend. What is a division of assembly? I call for a division of assembly. This is used when a member doubts the result of a vote. This motion may interrupt and does not require a second. The chair states a division has been called and proceeds to take a rising vote. How about a point of information? I rise to a point of information. The chair states, state your point. The member responds, how much money is in the treasury? Adjourning a meeting can be straightforward. To adjourn a meeting with no main motion on the floor, the chair states, is there any further business? If not, this meeting is adjourned. It does not require a vote. Robert's Rules of Order in a Nutshell